Hey there, and welcome to A Well-Rounded Life, the podcast, a space for creative entrepreneurs seeking an intentional life and biz filled with grace, passion, and purpose. I'm your host, Jamira. I'm a mama, wife, dessert fanatic, and on the ultimate mission to get you closer to your idea of what it means to live a well-rounded life. Right here is where you'll find curated resources, quick tips, and relatable stories, no matter what season of life you're in. So hang out with me for a bit and let's dive in. Hey friends, welcome to A Well-Rounded Life. I am really excited because I have one of my favorite people on the planet on today's show. It is my friend Kay, and we are speaking all about pricing in your business. So this is a great time to really, really, really think about your pricing, your packages, your offers as we prepare to get into a new year. For my friends in the wedding industry, this is a great opportunity for you to clean things up a bit before we go into engagement season. Kay is always a wealth of information, so I am pretty sure you're going to want to get your notebook out because she always has something impactful to say that is really going to get you thinking about things you may want to adjust in your business as we get into a new year. Okay, so I want to read Kay's bio and then I'm going to formally introduce you to my friend. Here we go. Kawania Wooten, CMP, brings a unique mix of experience and skills to her firm, Howerton Plus Wooten Events. Kawania's 30 years of planning professional conferences, high end events for the Washington, D.C. elite blend naturally with her past experience in the culinary industry. Known to her friends and family as Kay, she uses artistic skills, her keen attention to the smallest details, and her strong commitment to customer service as the hallmark of her business. As the founder of the company, Kawania strives for professionalism, creativity, and impeccable organization within every function planned by Howerton Plus Wooten Events. She draws on her experience and strong public speaking skills as she is an adjunct instructor in the hospitality, tourism, and culinary arts department at Prince George's Community College. Kawania's professional affiliations include Professional Convention Management Association, PCMA, and American Society of Association Executives, ASAA. She holds a bachelor's degree in mass media arts from Hampton University in Virginia, and she participated in the Harvard Business School's executive management program in June of 2005. Kawania has been married since 1996 to her husband, Christopher. Together, they are raising and loving on their son in Bowie, Maryland. Hi, friends. I'm over here smiling and can't wait to get into today's show. I have invited one of my absolute favorite people on the planet to share on a topic that you requested. Today, we are diving into pricing and profits with my dear friend, Kawania Wooten. Kay, as she is known to some of us, is the person that I personally go to with the hard questions for sound advice and a good laugh because we have a good time. By the end of today's show, I'm sure you'll agree that she is a force to be reckoned with. So without further ado, Kawania Wooten, welcome to A Well-Rounded Life. Hi there. Thank you for having me. Of course. Kay, do me a favor and introduce yourself to our Well-Rounders. Sure. I'm Kawania Wooten, and I'm based in Maryland. I grew up in Atlantic City, Casino City, but Maryland has been my home for the last 20 years. I'm a music mom as I like to tell people, because I've birthed and raised a musician somehow, (laughs) uh, Langston, and I'm married to Chris Wooten for 23 years. And um, so those are the important things. And then I've launched Howard to Wooten Events in August, on August 13, 2007. I started out as a solo entrepreneur, but now I have this amazing team of six wonderful women who work with me on all of our events. And Mm -hmm. I say all of our events because we manage all types of events. And so I share our company's mission is that simply at Howard to Wooten events, we bring people together. Mm -hmm. And that's why there is a plus symbol between Howard to Wooten and not a dash. Good, good stuff. Yes, Chris Wooten, her hubby, a lot of us in the industry know and love him. And her son, I call it Cousin Langston because I just... 
I love Langston and hearing all the Langston stories. And if you know Kay, you know how much her guys mean to her. So she also is a person that encourages me to be a better wife, a better mom, and just a better friend in general. Um, She's awesome. And Kay, do you even remember how we met? Because I thought about that the other day and I I can't even remember. (laughs) We met in Indianapolis at Eventology. Oh, yes. Eventology with all the IWED crews. Uh, that was a conference that I think that was out around the same time Engage started. Mm, and, that's right. Um, what was her name? Katara. I think that was her name. Started that conference. And I still consider Eventology one of the best wedding conferences that was put out there. And I, I agree. You know, that first one was uh, pretty rock solid. And uh, during that conference, we met you know, we got to meet some really good people in, in person. Yeah. That, well, are They're doing stuff. like amazing yeah. things. Yeah. It's yeah. funny because we met there, even though we were in each other's backyard. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I totally forgot about that back in my wedding planner days, but it was an amazing conference that was, I feel like the first of many that came after it, but it just set the tone and a lot of lifelong friendships were created as a result. Shout out to the eventology. Yeah. Shout out to you guys out there. All right. Hey, you have been a kick-ass wedding and meeting planner for years, but you have this other brand that is just phenomenal. And that is the Enlightened Creative. Tell me how the Enlightened Creative actually came to be over these past few years. Thank you so much. I, you know, I can, I am what I consider myself instead of saying I'm the old head, I'm an OG. I love it. Yes. (laughs) Um, I started planning events in 1989. Don't do that. Um, I I started teaching. I've been blessed with the opportunity to teach in the hospitality, tourism, and culinary arts department at Prince George's County since 2015. So I'm about to, you know, in a few months, start my fifth year. Uh, And I I realize I have this big love for teaching. and, and teaching and specifically in the hospitality industry. Mm-hmm. And um, what I realized over time, the more I talk to people, is that there are a lot of people in our industry who are amazing event planners, but somehow lost the foundation. Nobody got the foundation of event planning. Right. And some of those things you get as an OG because you start really from the ground up and work your way up. And so I want to make sure that when people present their events on Instagram or to a magazine or any type of media, a medium, that they're coming correct. That means the table is set properly. That means that they're working with the bands in the right way. Mm-hmm. And so I created this uh, series of guidebooks that cover every single aspect of event planning, um, from helping a young lady to pick a wedding, her wedding attire. That could be a dress or a suit, to helping people pick the right transportation for their Mm -hmm. event. Every single aspect. We have one that's soon to drop and it's dealing with all the measurements. Oh my gosh, so important. Like how many tables you can actually fit in a room, how many chairs you can fit around a table. Like I'm giving you numbers and the beauty of the numbers, this is going to sound like a nerd, but math never lets you down. And, And you do this math, your room is going to be set properly. That means the right dance floor, the right aisle runner, all of these things. It sounds nerdy, but you're gonna, this book, I put my money on it, is going to be the one everybody keeps in their purse or their binder because this is the one that's going to be the reference book. Can we just stop you right there? Only because if something like this would have been around back when I started 13 years ago, it would have saved me so much time. I don't even want to say the word embarrassed because you should never be embarrassed. But at the end of the day, it's like, why not have it in your back pocket until you never know when you're going to need it. And our jobs as planners is to be the one that has all the information, the vault. And what Kay has done is she has created the vault so that you look like you know what you're doing right out the gate 
because she did all the work for you and put it all together. And I've read the books and, and again, I'm just jealous of the people that have this resource that we didn't have access to. And so the fact that you just keep making it better and better and better is just like so crazy to me that it's information that we all, we all need. If you haven't checked out Enlightened Creative, you are missing out and you are wasting your time looking on Google and everywhere else because she's done the work for you. you. And, you know, I just say one little thing, and, I, and it's so funny. The reason that book, this book is so important to me is I remember for years working in the TV industry, never knowing how large a stage should be. Mm. And something that simple used to crutch, not crutch me, but paralyze me. And so I don't want anything simple to paralyze anybody else. I want to be able to give, not just educate people, but give them a peace of mind. Right, right. Like I said, in your back pocket, client asks you how much something should be or the measurements, as you mentioned, you can just say, sure, one second, and then make sure you have that resource that you can provide to them. Speaking of uh, planners and vendor partners and whatnot. So we're talking about pricing today. Let's say I am someone that is new to the game. How do I figure out or know what others are charging in my industry? So, you know, here's the thing about figuring out and knowing what others are charging in your industry. I don't want you to spend a whole bunch of time trying to figure out what everybody else is charging. Mm -hmm. Spend time figuring out who your target market is first. Okay. Because... My target market may have a budget levels or for different financial comfort zones than a different target market. Okay. And I will tell you, so if, so for example, when I started in 2007, I did make the mistake of checking to see what everybody else was charging. I never checked to see if that planner was providing the same type of service. Mm. I never thought to see what type of experience other planners were bringing to the table. I was just checking to see what everybody else was charging. And then I ended up charging something that didn't fit my brand. Interesting. And yes. wow. but what I recommend is figuring out, spending some time understanding who your core client is first. And when, and it's, you know, you've, you've actually even mentioned this, you got to know your avatar. Right. And once you understand who that avatar is, and that avatar is your core client profile. And let's just call her, I'm going to call her Becky. Hey, Becky. <laughs> hey, girl. <laughs> and, and Becky shops, you know, Becky shops at the finer stores. Becky doesn't just travel. And don't get me wrong, I don't want anybody saying Kwani hates the Caribbean. But Becky's vacations <laughs> don't fit with the Caribbean. Maybe Becky likes to go to a little Fiji or Thailand or... Tuscany for her vacation. Well, Becky is going to might have a different price point then. Maybe Becky has some advanced degrees and Becky has no children and Becky has that income to spend a little money on her services. Mm -hmm. Well, then I am going to focus more on the level of service I'm bringing to the table and rise up to Becky instead of to Becky's income and providing that kind of income instead of providing, you know, oh, a month of, I'll charge you $2,500 because I know that's what everybody else charges. Now, nobody's looking at me for what I'm bringing to the table. They're just looking at my pricing. Yeah. So, everybody needs to get to know their European Becky. Mm -hmm. and I'm no sorry. <laughs> I'm telling you, all my, my West Indian friends are going to be like, hold up, girlfriend. Let's no. Say. Toxic I'm, Pecos. I'm on my way there soon. Yeah. But a girl, this girl loves Europe as, as well. But yeah, get to know your European Becky, your Bohemian Barbara or whatever, <laughs> whatever your person is. But no, I think you make a great point is that people make the mistake of trying to do apples to apples and they charge this. So I should charge that. But at the end of the day, can you talk about, you know, you guys have to be aware of what experience are you and your team bringing? Do they even want or need the same thing? So you can't always compare apples to apples when every client, every bride, every groom, every couple is completely different as well. If I can share a quick story, there was a photographer whom, whom I have a great deal of respect for. When she came into the DC market, she was very clear that this is what I bring to the table. I am charging, and this was 
eight, seven or eight years ago, I'm charging a certain amount of money. It was significantly more than what most photographers charge then and what they charge now. But what she did was she sold her value. Mm. She sold what she was bringing to the table to clients. And I remember her talking to one of my couples thinking, oh my goodness, they are so not going to pay this price. But she had painted a picture and they could see how beautiful their wedding pictures were. And they were like, we're in. Sign me up. Yeah. Right. And, and that's how she got the fee she felt she was worth. Come in saying, hey, look at my wonderful pictures. This is how much I cost. No, she created an experience and a picture in their head, and they knew exactly what their wedding or their event was going to feel like. They may have had a slight gut check on that price, (laughs) but they valued it enough to find that money for it. Yeah, I think, you know, yes, you can, you don't want to be charging anything like, when people looking at you sideways, like really, as far as undercutting, you can charge whatever you want. I just, you know, always feel like it's important to just keep your head down and mind your business, be able to pay your bills. But as a big thing, as you said, be ready to explain the value and experience that you are going to bring that is going to just put you above everybody else to even begin with. So their prices don't even matter because you're going to smash the, competition for lack of a better word by what you're bringing to the table there right and I always use this as an example to my students when you see a commercial for an apple phone or a watch or an ipad or whatever they're never talking about the operating system hearing all of that information what you're hearing from apple is how that eleven hundred dollar phone is going to change your life or True make that. it better yes yeah, you're right. They don't compare the the system, the background, the this, this, and that. They're focusing on how amazing their product is. And usually without bashing the competitors, you're just right. enticed by what they're bringing and they showcase what they're going to, how they're going to make your life better <laughs> by signing up for what they have. So we figured out our price based off of uh, what we feel like we bring to the table or whatnot. But one question I have, or someone actually brought to my attention is how do we determine when to eventually increase our prices and how often should we even revisit our numbers? All right. So it's, that's an excellent question. And this goes back to what we were just talking about. Cause one thing in addition to selling your value is you need to know what you can actually charge Based on your expenses. Yeah. Pay them bills, girl. Yes. <laughs> you got to. And this is, this is the boring part of running a business, but it's the part that keeps you in business. Mm-hmm. You need to check your numbers on a regular basis. And right. there's three financial statements that I swear by. Your income statement, your profit and loss, and your balance sheet. But the income statement is something that I probably print on a regular basis. And that one is going to show me my revenue, the gross profit. And your gross profit is basically your revenue after the cost of your services or goods. If you're selling a product, the cost of goods sold. And you want to know if the cost of goods sold... And knowing your revenue so you can know your gross profit. This is not your net profit. We're not even getting that deep into it. It is your gross profit. And this will help you understand, am I even viable? Mm -hmm. One, am I charging enough? And two, are my expenses down low enough? Those two things help you know right off the bat if you um, are actually making money. Because the bottom line is, we're in this business to make money, Mm -hmm. you know? And so you got to know your financial statements. You have to know um, what's coming in and what's going out. And you should stay on top of that on a regular basis. Now, I'm going to answer your question. (laughs) When should I know when to, to increase my prices? So there's two things 
that helped me over the years figure out when I need to increase my prices. Whenever you're meeting with a client, you should ask them, who else are they talking to? Hmm. And the reason you want to know that is you already figured out who your target market is. You need to see if that marketing of yours is working. Who are they comparing you to? Hmm. That's good. And, And there was a time in my career where it was the same vendors that I was being compared to. And a few years ago, All of a sudden, when I start, when I kept, you know, whenever my clients ask, well, what other planners are they talking to? I realized I was in a different game. I was in a different ballpark. Right. Which meant, oh, snap. I'm probably. Mama, I made it moment. (laughs) I'm not charging what I should be charging. Right. People have placed me in a different price bracket. Right. And that is around the time you need to start looking at, okay, what is the word? What are they charging? And there's nothing wrong with getting an estimate, but you don't want to start comparing. You don't want to start talking to other vendors and saying, well, I'm charging this. What are you charging? Because that's illegal. That's called price fixing. You want to be able to get a sense of what the industry is charging, what the market will bear, And if you need to raise your pricing because marketing is saying that you're in a different price bracket, you should be raising it. You should not respond every time a client says, oh, you're too expensive. It's not your pricing. It's going back to selling your value. Right. You're basically saying I'm not for you. Um, You don't change your price based off of what they can afford. If anything, they need to figure out how to be able to afford you based off of that experience that you sold to them. Cause if they want it, my mom used to say all the time, people spend their money and people spend their time on what they want and what they feel is a priority and what they value. And yeah. you will be surprised if you are out here killing it and marketing the right way, then people will figure out a way to pay for your services. Right. We, we always right. figure it out if we want it really bad. And, and people always find money for what they really, really want. Sure so that will. Is, that is the one thing that is finding out, you know, realizing I'm, I'm in a different price bracket. My marketing is bringing in different clientele. The other thing was just looking, my expenses were increasing. I'd brought on team members that mm. required different um, expenses. I needed to increase my pricing to accommodate the additional expenses we were taking on. But with the new team members too, though, it also means that you can even level up and take it up a notch, which again, benefits the client because you do have more helping hands and you do have more eyes on it. And so those are things that people have to pay attention to is that you are, you know, your company is the real deal. And so you, you pay for that, you know, right. people, you know, they're coming to you based off of experience and as well. So guess what people, we pay for experience in our industry you know, at times. Exactly. Absolutely. The, absolutely. The expertise. So another question, um, and I can't, we kind of touched on this a little bit, but should you ever negotiate your rate per a client's request? Because we have these clients, they'll say, okay, um, this is my budget, or they'll say such and such is charging this. Should you feel in your opinion, uh, negotiate your rate? to meet the client's request? You know, there are times when I have, I offer a, um, I, I, I've never, I don't, I've never been a fan of the word discount. I offer a, an in- incentive. If a client comes to me and they're in a venue I haven't been in and I really want to get into that venue and it's not during the busy season, you know, so if it's not during September through November, Um, I may look and offer a 10% discount. I'm not going to tell the client, oh, it's because I want to get into that venue. (laughs) You know, you may give them something like, I really like you. I think we had this great connection. I will, I would love to work with you. I'm willing to offer you a 10% booking incentive. Something else though, uh, I don't mean to cut you off, but something else when you use the word incentive, another if, if you are a person that doesn't want to use the word discount or deal, you can add value as well, right? Like we'll give you another meeting or we'll bring an extra person, whatever it is, an extra, if you're a photographer, then you can give them another, um, 
uh, another hour of your time or add in some pages to an album as an incentive. If you know that maybe in your pricing, not strategy, but your business model isn't set up to take a discount, quote unquote, you can always add a little value of something that's not going to take up too much of your, your time or your resources there. But yeah, we've done that. I'm sorry. That's exactly what we do. We have an RSVP management service. Mm -hmm. I actually like managing my clients RSVPs because I think by that time in their wedding planning, they get exhausted and they tend to check out. Right. So I like managing RSVPs. So I always offer it as a, if you book by a certain date, we will throw this in. And I always tell a cautionary tale on why you want your planner to manage it. And it's something you have to have. Yeah. Um, And usually moms are all over that one, but we offer something to incent them to book within a certain period of time. And we always put a price value on it. So they realize that there, that there is something they're getting, but for the most part, we don't negotiate because this is a, this is a luxury service. And you have to know your numbers. You just made a good point about, you know, your numbers, you know, with your income, your loss, your balance, your stuff is solid. And so, you know, where there's wiggle room and you know that you're not in the business of, you know, taking five heat dollars off here, $10 there. We ain't got time for that. We're, we're here to get to work and make it worth your while in, in all of that. So we're not in the business of that. We're not over here for discount Debbie's. That's not our markets. Well, yeah. and I found that when I give a discount, usually those are the clients that are never happy. It's just man, listen, yeah, that's a whole nother show about the people you bend over backwards for. And that's just in life, and not even just in business, in life. The ones mm-hmm. that will complain the most, make your life a living hell, and just be like, oh my gosh, it's the nickel and dimers of the world. And no offense to the nickel and dimers out there that are listening, but this is where you might have to go, huh, did I give this person a hard time? Am I doing the most right now? Those are the people that you're like, it wasn't even worth it at at the end of the day. Yeah. Here's a yes or no question for you. Should you put your rates on your website? So here's the thing. I love what she says. Here's the thing. I know, right? (laughs) Believe me, my child's ear just twitched and he doesn't even know why. (laughs) Um, You know, all of my products, there's a price. Mm -hmm. All of my services, there's a starting price. Right. Everything we offer is custom. Hmm. So if I customize your service, the price is almost misleading. And I don't want any clients to ever felt like I gave them a bait and switch scenario. Good point. we, We start at this price based on what you want. And then this is where we end. But what I will share with my clients is what the average budget our couples typically have. And that gives them a sense of, okay, do I even fit within this? That's been very helpful to a lot of our couples. Yeah, it's something that I don't think people have thought about. I haven't, I will say personally, I didn't think about it until the last few years of my business is that people will spend money on the planner, the, that dream photographer, that dream whatever. But then even let's just use real life scenarios, that dream vacation to get there and to stay, whatever. But then they don't have any money left over to pay for the necessities and if going back to that vacation example of the little things that may come up like the baggage fees or the food that you need to eat once you get to said spot so it's great when you do present them with the average of what their clients uh your other clients have spent so that they can be realistic in what to expect and also knowing (laughs) that yeah, you can afford me, but can you afford the rest of the people that's a part of this production that you ultimately want to create or that experience that you want to actually create? Can you exactly. afford it? Yeah, let's be real. Part of getting to a certain level as a planner is you're working with similar vendors. Absolutely. Yeah, and you've got so your dream team. You're not going to bring in brand new, uh, super inexpensive vendor who may not be providing a similar level of service and because a client's not going to be happy and they're going to feel like it's your fault. That's a great point. To an investment into a luxury service, 
I have found that my clients are not as are much happier with me when I am not a big chunk of their investment of their mm-hmm. overall investment. Right. If right. I'm more than a certain percent, then I'm almost an obstacle for them or a roadblock. That's a great way to put it. Cause it's, and then it's the resentment and frustration and a whole bunch of other things that follow with that once they've dropped the money on you and then they don't only have pennies for everybody else that they need yeah. to create the experience that they are seeing on your social and everybody else's as well. Exactly. Um, this has been a topic of discussion in, in our industry uh, plenty of times. My next question is, do you feel it's valid for a newbie to charge what a five to 10 year veteran is charging out the gate? Yes. Okay. And it's funny because I know I'm probably in the minority on this one. I have no idea what that newbie brings to the table. That newbie may be 10 times more creative than I am. They may be, I have no idea what their experience of what, just because you're new. Because when I was new 12 years ago, I had still been working in the, I had been working in the events industry almost 15 years prior to that. So does that mean even though I have 15 years of experience and somebody's been working in the wedding industry for five years, has five years of experience, I shouldn't charge as much? That's crazy. No, I have no idea. So if somebody comes in the industry this this year and she wants to charge exactly what I charge, I'm like, you go ahead, girlfriend, knock yourself yeah. out. And yeah. I pray that she's successful at it. You know, yeah. then then I realize that now she's also just about to become my competition. So that that's not her concern. That's mine. Yeah, and if, it, if and if said newbie has done what we've already discussed, and she knows her numbers, and she knows her bills, and what she needs to to charge to pay to feed her family, that's not our business. Yeah. And you know, people in the corporate world they'll get hung up on what their colleague is getting for a paycheck, but the reality is you don't know what they negotiated. You don't know all the time what they've done in their past that the boss might have felt was a great value uh, to the company. You that's not your business. It's your job to know your numbers and not be worried about what everybody else is doing because life ain't fair. It's not always going to be what we think is fair, but instead it's your job to continue to just keep getting better and better and better. And so you are continuing to elevate even your prices and what you bring. So it doesn't matter what the new girl on the block is charging. When you say fair, fair, why you got to worry about being fair for me? <laughs> your business. Yeah. Yeah. It's literally, it's literally mind your business. Right. Mind, mind your business, not necessarily be all up in mine. So, well, you know, and it's funny because when people say that, I always get caught up on this. Instead of minding your business, manage your business. Mm. You manage your business, I'll manage mine. Then we don't have time to be worried about each other's business. Done. Yeah. And that's a topic we discuss on, on the podcast about the why not me, why me thing, where it doesn't matter if you are focused on your own stuff what anybody else is doing around you you don't have time for that you just you don't if you, you you really can't be focused on what the other person is doing gossiping amongst others in your community or at work about what other people are doing none of your business yeah we're not gonna do that a uh, okay. question that i have in this was something that was also um, asked is what's a good rule of thumb for creating a pricing strategy? You know, it's funny because I spoke about this on um, Enlightened Creative um, Insta Stories one. You need to understand your profit profit margin. Mm-hmm. In the service industry, they think a profit margin should be high. But let me just use event planners. I know that you're talking to more than just event planners. But event planners, our profit margin can teeter somewhere in that 10, 15%. And you want to get it as high as possible because really the bottom line is that net profit and your net profit is after those variable costs, the fixed operating costs, Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam's cousin, state Uncle Sam. (laughs) And then that what you have left is that's what you have to live off of. Mm Mm-hmm aid everybody. And you need to decide if I charge this and all of that work put in here is if this is enough for me to, is this profit margin enough for me to live off of? And, and, and your expenses change every year. Last year, 
I had, I didn't have um, in my budget to redo my website, but I got hacked. So mm-hmm. that, you know, I ended up spending seven grand by the time we were done to fix the whole hacking issue and redo portions of my website because the hackers had taken over. See, I'm about to pass out because there would be no website. <laughs> like, what happened to Jemima? <laughs> <But laughs> goes into, well, I could talk money all day, is your liquidity. How much cash do you have? You should have three months of business expenses saved. And my accountant always says to me, cash is king for small business owners. And you need to build up that three months and then figure out what are you willing to what is your profit? What is the profit margin I'm willing to live with? And that is going to help you figure out what your pricing strategy is going to be. Yeah, and the enlightened, y'all enlightening the creatives because that's just golden. Like the fact of knowing that you you feel like it. I remember the situation that you went through. Yes, uh-huh. it's frustrating and it was a nightmare, but it didn't break you. And you kept it moving and you were able, your clients and everybody else didn't realize what was happening in the back end. And it's just, it's just mind blowing because there are people out there that will go out of their way to, you know, hack and just do crazy things. But she built a solid business that was able to um, be able to bounce back from the things that come out of nowhere. And her website was up and running and just still fresh and popping with all the noise that was happening in the background. So that took months. Yeah. And like I said, in seven grand later, mm-hmm. not just seven grand, but we had to clean up the site. We had to, I lost all of my SEO that, that year. So everything I had worked years of blogging to get really high SEO, Google just dropped me like a hot potato. <laughs> and so, It took money and time to get my, and constant communication with clients, but I don't want to get off on a tangent. Pricing strategy. You want, you got to, you need that three, three months set aside. I recommend um, making sure that you have a certain profit margin in place. For me, um, for weddings, it's difficult for co- corporate. It was much easier to get a higher profit margin because corporate work brings more money. But I knew that my profit margins needed to be a certain number, you know, and that's somewhere in that between that 20 and 35%, 20% profit margin is good, but we spent a lot of time working when you're doing cost of services sold. So you need to keep a high profit margin so that you can pay your bills right. and your business going. And so you need all of that in place to determine. And, and it's funny because I've had mentees and students say to me, Oh, but that, then that means I'm charging too much. Well, then maybe you need to bring your expenses down. Yeah. That's a great point. So yeah. if, if you feel like your, your fee is too high, but the funniest thing is more than likely, whenever I hear people's fees, I'm like, your fees aren't high at all. That's just you being uncomfortable with charging that much money. And change is uncomfortable. Growth is uncomfortable. And you never know until you put yourself out there. And, but you can't do this and make it an, make it an expensive hobby. So if you know that you have to put that price tag on it, just be able to level up your services because a lot of that doesn't even cost money. You're just checking in on people, client experience, different things like that doesn't cost money, but it does add value. And so that's something that you can also do when you're trying to figure out what you're going to bring to the table is right. that experience you there. You to develop those systems and processes to help Boom. Um, yep. take, take away all that extra time that you use to write an email. Right. or deliver a service. And, you know, and let me just give a shout out to everybody out there who has a full-time job in addition to managing their business. The one thing is stop looking at your business like it's a side hustle or a mm-hmm. hobby. Manage it like a business. You don't have a side hustle and you don't have this hobby. This You have dual careers. Yes. You're managing two jobs simultaneously you are a dual career executive 
That means that you are managing both your job and your business efficiently and effectively and making sure that both of them are profitable. And I think that's what happens to some people when they have full-time gigs is it falls to the wayside because it's just never producing. And it's not that it isn't producing because they aren't talented or a smart business person. It just didn't get the level of love and respect that it deserved. Hmm. So treat it like it's just a second full-time job. Because it is. And anybody who has done it, I've done it where you've had uh, your traditional nine to five and then, you know, you will put in still eight hours a day on that second dual you know, career. We know that it's hard. And I love how you you always give respect to the people that are doing two and rocking it because it's a lot. It's a lot of work. And I feel like the people who do have the nine to fives and they are really pouring into their other career they don't get the respect that they deserve that could be a whole nother show as well but it's it's very important to know that you can do it if you have like you said this the pricing model correctly your systems in place and you use the resources that are available to you so you can work smarter and not harder because it's already a challenge so use the resources that have been created for you to make it a little bit easier along the way on this journey of entrepreneurship. But, all right, so you have a lot of amazing things always, always in the works, but is there something that you are launching soon or projects um, coming up that you um, are excited to talk about? Well, I, you know, I snuck in my books earlier, so I, but I will tell you, like I said, I'm very excited about the launch of this book that deals with measurements and staffing. But we're also putting out a new um, guide that is, you know what, let me stop. Yes, I do have something I'm excited (laughs) about. (laughs) Get excited, yeah. (laughs) And I'm, I'm putting out, I'm launching a new workshop on how to transition your wedding planning business into a corporate event. Wow. That is so good. You know how many people want to, they, they flirt with the idea of going into the corporate side of it. They hear great things about it, but you'll be the first to tell them the real deal, but also be the best person to let them know how to do it seamlessly and then just go into it blazing and, and ready. We will definitely leave some information about that in the show notes because you pour out your energy and love into everything. So I'm, I know it's going to be amazing. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. My last workshop sold out, so I hope that this one does too. I I know it will. Again, any wedding planner that's thinking about the corporate side of it, just definitely check out. I'm sure it'll be on your Instagram website or whatever and take a peek at it because this is another area where you can diversify your portfolio and grow your business as well. So like I said, I'll drop some information in the show notes once we do that. And a quick word of encouragement or advice for someone that may be feeling stuck in relation to their pricing strategy and just numbers overall. Okay. Number one, stop comparing. Mm -hmm. Whatever you charge is what you charge. Don't worry about what everybody else is charging because you have no idea what people are truly spending their money on and how much they're making. So stop worrying about that. And number two, be okay with charging more than what you can afford. Hmm. I, I could not afford to hire Howard to events to plan a wedding for me because, um, uh, um, uh, you know, grateful to my customers who can. Yeah. You'll be on the vision um, board for me, right? <laughs> One day. I'll be on my own vision board. Right. Uh, but um, right, she's amazing. Um, be okay with charging what you cannot afford yourself. Yeah, because you're not your avatar. That's something else that people don't exactly. realize. Yeah. I am not my core. Yeah, I like to go to the Caribbean um, for my vacations. I think that's a tough one to people. They feel like they need to apologize for charging too much. I have no idea where we got that, um, but we need to stop it. You can be humble and still charge a nice luxury fee at the same time. Very true. So, And I think that is a big thing, especially for the women out there, the women business owners. We've been taught so many times, you know, 
to be humble and you can still be humble and be amazing at the same God gave us these gifts. He wants us to showcase them. Absolutely. Absolutely. So okay with um, charging more than what you can afford. I think that's the one I'll leave that with. That's awesome. Well, this is my favorite part of the show. We're going to do some rapid fire questions. Kay, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. We kind of talked about where you like to vacation. So you're stuck on an island. What are the three things you must have besides your son and, and Chris Wooten, as we like to call him? Yeah. Well, my son's not coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely Chris Wooten number one. Chris Wooten right. come. We got to bring Chris Wooten. Okay. I need, a, I need a Moleskine journal with a good pen because I got to write everything down. And I know if I'm on an island, I need to, if I got to figure something out, I need a pen, I need a book and I need a good knife. I need wait, a good knife wait. <laughs> to cut up my food and, and to kill off any predators. My knife is going to be there with me. <laughs> All right. G.I. Jane. All right. <laughs> I was thinking more top chef, but okay. Okay. All right, um, good. And so what is an ideal vacation for you? <laughs> so me for an ideal vacation isn't about the location. It's about family, laughter, peace, and a really good view. Okay. So. What would you say is a misconception that people have about you? Everybody thinks I'm this Yoda who puts out all this information. <laughs> and and I'll, I'll tell you, sometimes I write those those little motivational quotes on the enlightened creative just for me just yeah. for me, you know, to motivate myself people think i'm all you know sweet and nice and some you know i worked in a kitchen in college so i learned how to curse very well yeah, yeah. i'm gonna let them in on a secret so yeah this is my uh, <laughs> we, we joke our relationship is like maya and oprah and i love it and so we can cut up act like we have no sense, uh, curse like the best of them, and then go on with our days and be professional after that. But she's that person that I'm calling to laugh and to just have a good time with, to vent and do whatever. And so I will, I can say on the record, yeah, you're not always the Yoda, but you're a hell of a good time. (laughs) So what is something on your bucket list? And take a cooking class in Tuscany. Yes. I'm so excited for you. I'm super excited because I know it's something you've wanted to do for a while. So that's exciting. What is the nicest thing that someone has done for you? You know, it's funny. Whenever anybody asks me that question, I think the nicest thing someone ever has done for me is fat daddy. Oh boy. Because he raised me and I, I, you know, I'm not his biological kid. And I remember somebody telling fat daddy that he was um, too dark to be my dad. And he was a mechanic, and so he was always covered in grease. And he had always wore coveralls. Pulled up his pants um, one time when this guy was like, gosh, your daughter is awfully light. And he pulled up his pants, and because the pants didn't get any sun, he's like, see, we're the same color. Mm-hmm. And the guy was like, oh, I didn't realize. And when the guy left, got my fat daddy looked at me, he's like, what a knucklehead. And I just always remember thinking how he always made me feel like there was nothing about me that was different from him. Yeah. And I always consider that to be the nicest thing anyone has ever done for me. And yeah. so I try to do that for others, to make people feel included. That's amazing. Yeah, you had an amazing relationship with your dad in the same way that I, you know, did with my stepfather who raised me. And so it's, it's always something special when you do have someone that loves you as if you were their biological child. So shout out to those step-up parents of the world. Yeah, step and, up. I like that. Yeah, step up parents. Who are your role models and mentors? So my mentor is a woman named Kay Russell. It just so happens we both have a name Kay. She's a veteran in the hospitality industry. She's very generous. And she's taught me how to be generous to others hmm. with your knowledge and your expertise, not to hold on to anything that comes your way. And it just so happens she and I also share the same birthday. She's just 15 years older than me, but ooh. I hope she doesn't watch this. Listen to this. Um, <laughs> we we'll edit it out. <laughs> and uh, what did I look up to? Oprah, Shonda Rhimes, Condoleezza Rice, uh, which, yeah, Condoleezza Rice, and um, my own grandmothers. That's sweet. 
If you can learn any skill in the world, what would it be? I learned how to grow vegetables. Oh, okay. I, I'm trying so hard to be a plant lady and I kill plants. Mm. If, there was, if it was a crime, I'd be in jail. <laughs> um, but I want to learn how to grow vegetables. Yeah, one day. I, I had a garden at one point and then I got just got busy. But one day I'll get back to that. What is your favorite season or time of the year? Autumn. Um, sweaters, leaves, HBC, homecomings, and Thanksgiving. All the good stuff is in fall, in case y'all didn't know. And lastly, what's your guilty pleasure? Facials. Really? Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm overdue. And I refuse to skip them. And the older I get, the more valuable I find them. Because your skin I, is popping. Yeah, you're looking I, good. I, thank you. I, you know, I rely on the DNA for my skin, but I also know that in order to keep that skin up, I'm going to go to um, the spa and get a little hookup once a quarter. And so every Still quarter, I, if I make money, I use some of that money. That's my gift to myself. If I make money that quarter, I use some of that money to get a facial. Yeah, self-care is important. You only get yeah. one face, one body, one, you got to take care of it, period. Yeah. So. Today's show was awesome, Kay. Thank you for coming on the show and agreeing to be the subject matter expert on pricing. I didn't even want to dare attempt because I knew that you would be the best fit for this topic. So thank you for coming on the show. Super informative. And I just, again, want to thank you for stopping by and enlightening our listeners. So how can our well-rounders stay in touch with you and your amazing team? Well, of course, my website, first and foremost, that's where all of my love is, and that's hwevents.com. And if you wanted to find those books or the tutorials, the online classes, it's, it's theenlightenedcreative.com, theenlightenedcreative.com. Okay. And on social media, it's the same way. Most of our, uh, our handles um, are Howerton Wooten or HW Events DC, or The Enlightened Creative. Yes. All All right. And as I mentioned, guys, I'm going to link everything in the show notes, um, and everything will be on our website at wellroundedlifepodcast.com. And as a bonus, Kay is going to... um, She's generous enough to grant you guys a freebie and I'm going to drop that in the show notes. You definitely want to check it out because it's more information on um, the pricing stuff that we talked about today. So I'm going to make sure you have access to that because I know that it is something that you will need. So thank you for listening. I appreciate you guys. This was so much fun and we'll be back next week with a brand new episode. Bye. Friends, thanks for kicking it with us this week. Remember to subscribe so you're notified when a new episode airs. I'd love it if you leave us a review and share this goodness with your squad. Until next time, seek a well-rounded life and remember to focus on what matters most.